Hello, my name is Tamara Keith and I'm a paediatric trainee in London and I'm going to talk to you about cystic fibrosis. This talk is based on the textbook Training in Paediatrics, the Essential Curriculum by the Oxford University Press. The general outline of what I'm going to talk about is a background to cystic fibrosis and why it's important that we know about it, the genetics, the pathogenesis, the clinical features, diagnosis, management of cystic fibrosis and the prenatal diagnosis and screening available. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive condition. It is a multi-system disorder with chronic respiratory tract infection and pancreatic enzyme insufficiency. There's a carrier rate of 1 in 25 in the Caucasian community and incidence of 1 in 2,500 live births, with a life expectancy now of between 30 to 40 years. Cystic fibrosis is caused by mutations to the CFTR gene. This is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene. There are over a thousand different mutations identified. However, the most common mutation is the Delta F508, accounting for 76% of those affected in the UK. This is a complicated diagram illustrating the structure of the CFTR gene and its function. CFTR is a glycoprotein with 1,480 amino acids. The protein is found in epithelial cells of the airways, ducts of pancreas, sweat glands, biliary system and the vas deferens. You will see later how this explains the clinical features of cystic fibrosis. The protein has five domains, two membrane spanning domains, each connecting to a nucleotide binding fold in the cytoplasm and a single regulatory R domain. The function of the gene is that it is a chloride channel which is activated by phosphorylation of the R domain and binding of ATP. Activation results in opening of the chloride channel and closure of the sodium channels. Loss of function results in decreased secretion of chloride and increased resorption of sodium. The pathogenesis of cystic fibrosis involves the loss of function of the CFTR gene. This leads to decreased secretion of chloride and increased resorption of sodium and water across epithelial cells. This therefore results in viscous secretions in the respiratory tract, pancreas, gastrointestinal tract, sweat glands and other exocrine tissues. The decreased chloride secretion and increased sodium reabsorption results in airway surface liquid being reduced. Therefore a viscous mucus is produced. This further inhibits ciliary function and leads to a chronic infection and inflammation and this then leads to the lung damage seen in cystic fibrosis. Other features are seen in the gastrointestinal tract, pancreas and liver. 85% of patients have pancreatic insufficiency. There is reduced bicarbonate secretion which disturbs the optimal pH for pancreatic enzymes. There is reduction of water content of the secretions and plugging of ductules and pancreatic acini and pancreat pancreatitis commonly occurs. In the gastrointestinal tract, there is reduced water and chloride secretion into the duct. This can cause meconium ileus, which occurs in the newborn phase and may be the presentation of cystic fibrosis. It can also lead to distal intestinal obstruction syndrome. In the liver, reduced CFTR function in epithelial cells of the biliary tract increases bile viscosity and plugging of the biliary ductules. Obstructive cirrhosis, portal hypertension, hypersplenism can also occur. And gallstones and cholecystitis are more common in cystic fibrosis. 
In the sweat glands, high sweat salt content is seen due to failure of chloride and sodium reabsorption from the sweat ducts. The vas deferens are affected in males, with most males being azospermic due to agenesis of the vas deferens. Mild mutations of CFTR can cause isolated congenital bilateral absence of the vas deferens. The main clinical features of cystic fibrosis to remember are recurrent chest infections, steatorrhea and failure to thrive. 10% of cystic fibrosis, fibrosis patients present with meconian ileus as a newborn. So the main clinical features are respiratory, being recurrent chest infection, cough, atypical asthma, wheezing, recurrent sinusitis and nasal polyps. In the GI tract, pancreatic and hepatobiliary system, you may see meconium, meconium ileus, intestinal atresia, or delayed passage of meconium or jaundice in the neonatal period. In infants and children, they may present with failure to fly, flatulence, recurrent abdominal pain, malabsorption, or rectal prolapse. On examination, you may see sinusitis, nasal polyps, clubbing, cough, increased AP diameter of the chest, crackles, shortness of breath, recession and wheeze. A child may look malnourished, anemic, have dry skin due to vitamin A deficiency or a skin rash due to zinc deficiency. There can be abdominal distension, hepatosplenomegaly and rectal prolapse. As you can see, there is a wide array of clinical features in cystic fibrosis. The diagnosis is based on the sweat test. This is the first line investigation in suspected cystic fibrosis and can be performed after two weeks of age in a child over three kilos who is well hydrated. You repeat the test if it is positive or if it is negative and you still strongly suspect the diagnosis. The sweat test is officially called the quantitative pilocarpin inotrophoresis test. A minimum of 100 milligrams of sweat should be collected. A normal or negative test is less than 40 millimoles of chloride. A borderline is 40 to 60 and positive being supportive of the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis is a sweat chloride content of over 60 millimoles. False positive tests can occur in adrenal insufficiency, ectodermal dysplasia, glycogen storage disease, and familial hyperparathyroidism. Diagnosis can also be made by DNA analysis and the CFTR analysis for the Delta F508 and up to 30 other mutations is currently available. These account for 90% of all CF mutations. Detection rate is lower in non-Caucasians, atypical disease and those with borderline sweat chloride results. Negative results reduce the chance of cystic fibrosis but does not exclude it as they may have a genetic mutation which is not picked up by the DNA analysis. So the baseline investigations required in a patient diagnosed with cystic fibrosis include chest x-ray which may show hyperinflation, peribronchial thickening, and then progress to patchy infiltration and bronchiectasis. Sputum culture is required to see if there is Staph aureus infection, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, or Klebsiella. Blood tests for full blood count, coagulation, immunoglobulins, renal and liver function are required. And vitamin levels of A, D and E, fat-soluble vitamins, are required. Treatment of the respiratory side of cystic fibrosis involves physiotherapy to aid airway clearance of the thick mucus, antibiotics, firstly prophylactic oral flucloxacillin at diagnosis, 
and treatment of acute infection. Mucolytics, DNAs, increases mucociliary clearance and increases lung function. Bronchodilators and steroids are sometimes of benefit if there is bronchial hyperactivity with reversible airway obstruction present in 30% of cystic fibrosis patients. The nutritional side of cystic fibrosis is treated with Creon, which is needed in patients with pancreatic insufficiency. A PPI is needed to compensate for defective pancreatic bicarbonate secretion, and it also increases the efficacy of Creon. The fat-soluble vitamins, which are poorly absorbed, need to be supplemented, that is A, D, E and K, and a diet needs to be high fat and high calorie, as there is above average energy requirements as well as malabsorption. Cystic fibrosis patients are living longer, and so there are more complications seen than there used to be. The complications around that are seen in the hospital and in general practice include distal intestinal obstruction syndrome, hepatic cirrhosis, cholecystitis and gallstones. You may see hemoptysis, right heart failure, diabetes mellitus. There may be delayed puberty and reduced fertility and also the psychological, in psychological impact of such a serious chronic disease. Newer therapies now available include lung transplantation, which has a 50% survival at five years, and gene therapy, where trials are underway. Prenatal diagnosis is offered where there's a family history of cystic fibrosis and carrier screening if there's an affected child. A newborn screen is offered to all infants. They have a Guthrie spot test for immunoreactive trypsinogen, IRT. Mutational analysis is offered in infants with an IRT above the 99.5 centile. In summary, we've discussed cystic fibrosis, which is an autosomal recessive condition with carrier frequency of one in 25. It's caused by mutations in the CFTR gene most commonly the Delta F508. This results in defective chloride secretion and excess sodium reabsorption. The classic symptoms are a con chronic respiratory infection, failure to thrive and malabsorption with steatorrhea. Diagnosis involves the sweat test with a chloride over 60 millimoles per litre. Treatment is both respiratory and nutritional a prenatal diagnosis and screening is available. This talk is based on the book Training in Paediatrics, the Essential Curriculum. Thank you for listening.